All right, today is going to be a concert of prayer. We're going to wrap up our study, our series on prayer. We're never going to wrap up the study of prayer. Uh, today, just by singing, by opening God's word, by using God's word to voice our prayers. So everything is going to be done on the screen. Uh, the songs that are chosen, the words are going to be on the screen. There's voices on the screen for you to follow along. Anna is also going to sing along with the uh, songs so that you have another voice to join along with. If the voices on the screen or the video aren't necessarily the ones that you can follow, Anna is also going to be singing. You can follow along with her. All right? So as we uh, get this started, we're going to sing a song. This one, I would like for everybody to stand and sing this one. This is a great opening song. This will be the only one that you have to stand for except for the closing song. We'll let you know that it's a good opportunity for you to stand and sing that song. Otherwise, you can stand and uh, sing out to God or pray or do whatever at your leisure. Or you can stay right there and pray in your uh, seated position. All right? We want to come into the presence of God through prayer. We seek to worship God together, to saturate our hearts and our lives with God's word, to glorify God through our life. When we come together into the presence of God, we experience his righteousness, his peace, his joy, his love, and his hope. Our prayer is communion with God. We've looked at that over the last couple of weeks. We pour out our lives to him in prayer. Our thoughts, our longings all come before God. And then we wait and we listen to hear his answer. God delights in our communion and he works in us to make us more like Christ, all the while revealing his will for us. God's word tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, I exhort you, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. We begin with preparation. We want to use Scripture today to voice our prayers. This time together should be spent not just reading the words that are on the screen, but praying God's word. Prayer is not a spectator sport. We're not sitting here today allowing someone else to pray for us. We want to be actively involved in this prayer time. This time together is to build our relationship with the Lord, our intimacy with him, and to seek him and listen to him. We begin our prayer time with this time of preparation, using God's word to voice our prayers.
Now we'll be using Scripture. Pray through this Scripture that's displayed. I'll be reading it so you can read it along, you can pray it, or you can just listen and pray through it. Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. God, we're preparing our hearts right now, our minds, as we speak your word. Hear our prayers. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Hear my voice when I call. O Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. O Lord, the God who saves me, day and night I cry out before you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I call with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord, and I will obey your decrees. O Lord, I call to you. Come quickly to me. Hear my voice when I call to you. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. We've spent time preparing our hearts and our minds. We've called out to God using his word to hear our prayers. Now we turn to adoration. We lift up God. It's easy to love when we love someone to praise them and adore them, isn't it? The same is true with our Lord. We tell them how we feel, how they've blessed us. This shouldn't be done with empty words, with memorized words, but rather from our heart because our relationship with him is right. Our God is magnificent, he's awesome, and he's personal. David does an incredible job of expressing adoration for who God is. We're going to be using God's word, we're going to be singing and speaking God's word to praise and adore him, to honor him, and remember the characteristics of God.
Does that get anybody else? Your heart's getting there? Amen. Psalm 86, I am devoted to you. You are my God. You are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all to call to you. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you. They will bring glory to your name. You are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God, for great is your love towards me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him. All his angels praise him. All his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all you hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on, on earth, Young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him in the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountains, for the Lord our God is holy. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Where you are now, lift up adoration to God. Each voice, don't wait for anybody else. Let it flow from your heart. Lord, you are magnificent and mighty. You have demonstrated this throughout the ages. Praise God. You are light. You are love. You are life. God, you are all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere. You are involved in all things. Praise God with your voices. You are eternal, you are unchanging, and you are perfect. You are infinite, you are three in one, your majesty is on display for all to see. We praise you, God. You are merciful, you are righteous, you are wrathful, and you are just. God, you are gracious, you are patient with us, you are tender and you are forgiving. God, you are faithful, and you are pure. You are creator, and you are sovereign, Lord. We praise you. You are the good shepherd, and you guide your people. You are peace, and you are love. 
We praise your name. You are full of glory. You are holy God. Your praises now. Lift up your praises and then we will sing. When we exalt God, our position as sinners becomes much more apparent. We cannot lift up God without recognizing our position and our need. We come to God now exalting him and lifting him up and thanking him, adoring him for the salvation he provided, and now we come to our position and we confess, we repent, we do not regard sin in our heart or our prayers are not heard. During this time, we seek forgiveness from sincere hearts. Not just a casual apology, not just because we've been caught, but because we've repented. We've turned away from the sin that God is pointing out in our lives. We've exalted God. We acknowledge that God hates sin, that he will pour out his wrath on sin. And we confess. We start by confessing our personal sin. And then we move on and confess our corporate sins and the sins of our churches and our families.
This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. Search my heart, God, find those sins that I have hidden away. Bring them to the front so that I can confess them and turn away from them. I repent of all my wrongs. Personal prayers where you are, confessing, repenting, turning to God. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. God, point out that sin that besets us, the one that continues to come up in our lives. We have the strength and the ability to conquer sin in your name, and I ask that you help us today. The good news is that if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. God, we confess to you. We fall before you and your grace that's poured out for us, your mercy on us as sinners. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now that you've poured out your personal confessions, forgive those who have sinned against you. God, help me to love those that have sinned against me like you love me. Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Confess our families' failures. You know what they are. Confess them now before God. God, take our families and use them for your glory. Turn the failures into strength. May you be glorified in our families. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Confess our church's failure. we confess that sometimes in the pursuit of what seems good, we've left behind what's best and what's right. Help us to be a church that chases after you and seeks your glory and not our own. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. We confess our country's failures. The country founded on God's word has turned so far away. We confess, we turn again, and we ask God. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the promise after our repentance. When we confess and we lay our sins out before God, refreshing follows. 
Now that we've sought forgiveness and forgiven, we have a pure heart. Now we come into the presence of God. Isn't that a great feeling, the refreshment that comes when you know that you've confessed your sin and laid it out before God? He restores our souls. Now we come and we give thanks. In David's conversations with God, we see declarations of thanksgiving. David was someone that had an understanding of sin and failures, wasn't he? But he came to God, he confessed, he repented, and God restored him. And then David sang thanksgiving. Not just general thanks, but very specific for the things that God had done. For rescue, for protection, for salvation, for deliverance, and many other things. We want to use this time to pray and carefully consider the things that God has done for us, for our answer to prayers, how he specifically has blessed each and every one. While we're giving thanks, be specific. We're not just thanking God for his salvation, which is one of the things that we must thank him for. But we thank him for how he's transformed us, how he's working in us, how he has worked in us. Right now, we're going to sing, and then we're going to open God's word, and I want you to have a great time thanking God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Do you believe that? His love endures forever. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. 
Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Praise God. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and for his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Thank God where you're sitting now. Thank God for his salvation. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. Go ahead. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Thank God for redemption from our sin. Thank God for his atonement. In that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Thank God for your health today. Thank God for life. In that day you will say, oh, I missed that one, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Thank God for his shed blood and broken body. Thank God where you are now for friends. Thank God for family. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God where you are for protection. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for freedom to worship. All of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Glorify God in our thanksgiving. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. Now is your time, your own personal thanks, where you're sitting for what God has done and is doing in your life. What a difference in how I normally come to prayer with my list of things that I'm asking God for. I start here and I adore him. I lift him up 
I thank him for who he is and what he's done. I confess my failures, my sin. I turn away from it. And then I give thanks for all that he has already done. Then I bring my petitions, my supplications, my requests. Now that we're saturated with God's word, we've exalted him, we've confessed our sin, and we've been forgiven. We've given proper thanks for what he has done for us. Now we come to him with our petitions and our requests. Our hearts are right before God. Continue to use God's word to voice even our requests and our petitions before him. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. God, fill us with your spirit and let your fruit of the spirit be a obvious as it spills out of our hearts and minds. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. God, thank you for the blessings. Continue to pour out your grace and mercy on us. Pray that our church is used for God's glory in this community. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Pray that our church is used for God's glory around the world through our global staff. How are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Pray for our global staff's needs right now. Pray for our church's leadership. Pray for the members of our church that they seek to glorify God in their lives every day. He has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Pray that we continue to seek God and his presence in our lives. Pray that we live out God's love. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Pray that we bear kingdom fruit. Not doing the things that we think are best, but the things that God has said is best. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you.
Now is the time for your personal requests. Knowing that God has promised to meet all of our needs. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. To live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's a request right there. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. A daily request. God, keep us from being stained by the world around us. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Jesus' prayer of request to his Father, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you loved me. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works then these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful picture? In our union with God, he reaches out to us. If we continue in this process of being in constant communion daily with him, being saturated by his presence, he will answer us. Take time daily this week. Spend time with God. Make this communion a habit. It'll increase our faith. It'll increase our ability to be used by God and to accomplish his will in our lives. We'll pray and then a final song and when the song is over, you'll be dismissed. God, thank you for this time that we could come together to open your word and see how we pray your word back to you. We are so thankful that you have provided for us, that you care for us, that you love us enough to want this communion with us. Thank you again for all these things. Be glorified in us. Amen.
This has been a free presentation by Hickory Corners Bible Church. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting us through hickorycornersbible.org slash give. Hickory Corners Bible Church reserves all copyright protection under applicable law and in accordance with our Christian Copyright Licensing International streaming license. For more information about us or to connect with us, please reach out through our Hickory Corners Bible Church Sermons YouTube channel, our Hickory Corners Bible Church Facebook page, or our hickorycornersbible.org website. Our pastors are also available to talk weekdays from 9 to 4 Eastern at 269-671-4505. We hope you will join us next time as we continue helping ordinary people passionately follow Christ.